So tell us about the leap from, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> from um, production designer, right. from builder into producer. How did that happen on SUS? Um, I, I, very fortunate, work with uh, a team uh, where we've produced uh, three short films, which are brilliantly written uh, by uh, Mark Straker and directed by Clint Dyer. And that's a good training ground. That's a brilliant training ground. So on... Um, and on these, these were ambitious films, sh short films, shot on 35 mil at yeah, times. They, yeah, they weren't, yeah. you know... Yeah, the second one was we won an award at uh, the Very Short Movie Festival in Los Angeles. And, yeah, they were and they are. Um, and uh, with SAS, you know, it was fantastic that uh, Clint and, and Rob Heath and... Uh, and Jono then and got together and had this discussion to say, right, we can turn you know this fantastic play by Barry Keefe into a film. So I then came on board. Um, I I've always had those ambitions. I mean, fortunately, I also teach or have taught, as 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 you know, and and viewing film as a project from a project management point of view. You're right. managing a particular project. You're managing so many different departments. Right. So it's been a slow um, thing that's evol been evolving for me. And also, I think if you have an understanding of how all the different uh, departments work, it makes you a far better manager. Right. You know, I have that advantage of my wife is a makeup artist. Yeah. I have an inkling there. So, and so all what the you're rest. saying is, on a low budget, one of the key skills is the ability to just take your resources and manage it and make it worth work, and not just kind of go off and fly. No, to and, and the other thing is, is that you have got a lead from the front and muck in. You know, I've grit. You've just got to get going and just do it and mm. and be and be available. Mm. You know, and if it means that you from your heady heights, everyone thinks, you know, producer, you know, up there, rubbish. Make the tea, get the broom out and mm. sweep the floor. First know. on set, last to go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned earlier Barry Keefe. Now, Barry Keefe wrote The Long Good Friday. Absolutely. How on earth did you get him? Um, Clint and uh, Rob Heath <coughs> know Barry. And uh, Clint was in uh, Barry Keefe's play, Sass, at the Young Vic last summer. So the discussion came about. So it's, it's a play turned into a, a movie? Uh, yeah, yeah. So all the hard work, all the, all the stuff that is usually a problem for a, an independent producer, like creating your first script, mm. it's all done? Mm. Yes, and then, uh, I mean, the play's been out there for 30 years and is extremely, extremely well known. Um, but there is a challenge, even though it seems that there seems to be an in thing about taking plays right now and putting them into film. But there is a challenge with that because you've got this play that is in one room. But fortunately, because of the subject matter and the issues that it raises, it is extremely, I would say that, I suppose, but it is extremely engaging. Mm. And that's why for 30 years, I've extremely engaging on celluloid and has been extremely engaging in the theatre and has been for 30 years and is extremely proven. Right. OK. So... Um... <clears throat> What have you learned making SUS as a filmmaker, as a producer, as a businessman? What are the big broad lessons that you've learned? In fact, just before that, let, let's, what, is, what is the story of SUS in a nutshell, without giving the end away, which you yeah. nearly did? <laughs> <laughs> I, that, was, that was deliberate sort of uh, timing, comic timing of mine. Then. James is laughing again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, SUS, it, it's, on, it's on the eve of the election of 1979, of Margaret Thatcher coming into power on the eve of the election. And SUS is the slang is the slang word for stop and search, and SA, the SUS laws contributed to the riots that then happened in 1981 in Brixton, and then and happened um, in uh, in Tottenham, and then happened uh, by 1985 in Peckham, and it and it was the abuse uh, of of police powers in 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 uh, in picking on people from um, ethnic minorities. Right, and, it and, was just and it, the whole play, or the whole film plays in this, this one room is one guy who's Absolutely. been stopped and and searched. and he has been stopped and searched, he's been accused of a crime, and then it plays out right. from there. Right, okay, well don't say any more, because it not. is in theatres, which yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. talk about in yeah. a minute. So, going back to my earlier question, what have you learned? What are the big, broad strokes that you've the learned thing, that you The thing on? that I, one of the biggest things I've learned of late is that whole thing of, of marketing and social networking and the way you know, Facebook, etc., etc., 
texting people, getting people to go to the cinema. That, it, is, it is extraordinary, isn't it? Because there is this mm. perception that, and I know I've been through this on, on yeah. all of the films, yeah. that your film is going in the cinema, that means 10 million people must be going to see it. Right. And in actual fact, you almost fight for every Absolutely. single ticket Absolutely. sold. Absolutely. And, and, and when they do the calculations yeah. on the Sunday night about which films are yeah. going to stay yeah. over, yeah. it really comes down to... If we'd only got three more people, mm. I remember with Urban mm. Ghost Story, if we'd mm. got three more people in one particular screening, mm. we'd have been held over mm. for a further week mm. at a particular cinema. And also, and as you know from when we do, you know, did White Angel, you know, the weekend that you open, open just after Easter and it's yeah. raining and all the rest, and it's just pants, and yeah. and you just think, and there, you know, and there is that element of fortunateness involved in that. But that is definitely one thing that I have learned, which is, as you talk about, which is cracking the nut, which is making sure that people will go at a particular yeah. time. Cracking the house nut, the which, house is the, nut yeah. which is that, that, that kind of algorithm yeah. that calculates yeah. that yeah. if you hit that certain number, you start to get a really great yeah. revenue yeah. from the box office. Mm. And I think, you know, that is one thing that I have learned. I've also learned, you know, the whole thing of deliverables and what you've got, got to get together. Um, and and also do, just doing things like this, pal. You know, you've got to get on that PR machine yeah. and get out there and talk about your particular product. Mm. After I have been on on mm. someone's roof all day putting mm. four skylights <laughs> in, but that but that puts thing that puts life in perspective, and that yeah. is what is really really important. Yeah, you know as well.